Okay, so this video was actually filmed before the France trip that I posted on my channel a couple of weeks ago. However, I spent a lot of time and effort on that video, so I wanted to get it out as soon as possible, which meant I actually forgot about this video. So um, yeah, this is the video about my new bike. And I'm also gonna be posting another one in a couple of days about my 2019 bike packing setup. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, good morning guys, what's going on? Good morning, good morning. I, I just said good morning like three times. Good morning guys, what's going on? Welcome your faces back to another day and another video. We're about to head out on the bike right now for a little bit of a ride. It's not a bad morning here in Lancashire in the UK, in the northwest of the UK. It's a little bit cold. It's the first ride of the year where I'm having to wear my uh, Castelli uh, Gabba or as, it's now, or as it's now known as the Castelli Perfetto. I think it's probably like the one piece of kit that everyone should have. It will be the best purchase you ever, ever make for riding a bicycle, like hands down. It's perfect for wet and cold uh, days on the bike. I mean, today's not wet, but it's, it's, it's pretty cold. It's like currently about seven or eight degrees. So let's get kitted up and let's get on the bike. So I'm continuing to test some equipment today ahead of the big trip to France next week. The audio in yesterday's video was okay, but you can, you can still hear quite a lot of wind noise. Normally I might use my big camera, which is this Sony A6500. I've got an external microphone that clips into the top of it, but look, the issue with that is it's just far too bulky. And like I said, with this trip, minimalism is key and having a big bulky microphone on the top of the camera means it doesn't fit in the bag. So instead I'm testing out some of these wind jammers. So hopefully right now it sounds a little bit better. You can't really hear that background noise of wind as much. And it just, yeah, generally sounds a lot clearer. I won't know however until I get home, but um, yeah, I mean, if it hasn't enough wasted 10 pounds. It's also my first ride today with the Wahoo Element Roam. Gonna be using this thing for the trip just because the maps are a little bit bigger and a bit easier to see. And the battery life is supposedly a lot better than the, than the normal Element Bolt. So yeah, without further ado, let's go for a bike ride. I think today I'm gonna head towards the coast, but we'll see where the road takes us. According to my trusty Element Roam, it is seven degrees right now. But despite that, I'm not at all cold. I mean, I am kitted out, I've got gloves on, a buff, my gabber. Okay, I'm just editing this video right now and I just wanna point out that it may seem like it, but this video is definitely not an ad for Castelli. However, Castelli, if you do wanna sponsor me, my email's in the description box down below, please send me an email and we can talk business. I'm just kidding. But it's pretty pleasant this morning, morale's good. I'm looking forward to the trip next week, so it's nice to get a little bit of time in on the bike to prepare a little, I mean, there's only so much preparing you can do in three days, four days, but hey, something's better than nothing. However, this afternoon, there is a storm called Lorenzo moving in. I mean, right now it looks like anything but a storm. Look at the skies, man. It's looking pretty sick right now, but there's one thing I don't trust in the UK, it's the weather. So I'm gonna keep pressing on and get home before that comes. Just enjoying these country field roads, man. This is what I miss about Lancashire when I go away. This is what I miss about home when I go away, just these open roads, dead quiet. Look at that. Some guy just made a uh, cow out of hay bales. Welcome to Lancashire. And this is it, Southport coast. Doesn't really look too much like the Croatian coast we were at last week. Slightly colder, a little bit more wind, and a little bit less blue and more green. A lot more green. All right, you rejoin me at one hour 53. I'm just heading home now. It's gonna be just over two hours, maybe two hours five, two hours 10 by the time I get home. A decent little ride to do this morning. And again, another one to just open up the legs a little bit and uh, get myself used to some, a little bit of endurance again before next week because, I mean, I'm gonna talk more about it at a time, but I think our initial schedule is to be like 140 to 160K per day. I'm unsure yet how we're gonna pace it, but I think it's just gonna be largely our feel. I mean, today I've averaged 215 and it's the kind of pace you can just ride out all day. So I think it's, uh, I think kind of a 200 mark is a good number. You know, if you're doing long days back to back, you've got heavy, heavy panties on your back full of clothes and stuff, you don't want to be going mega hard and putting yourself in the red. So high zone one into low zone two, I think is a good kind of boundary. That is an absolutely whopping two hours. A 30.2K an hour average, 215 average power. The France panic training continues. It's weird, man, like, I mean, for someone, okay, I'm basically, I, okay, so I basically train 
uh, like a full-time athlete, right? And in the season, that session, two hours at 215 watts, wouldn't even be a drop in the ocean. Whereas today, like, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't hard, but I certainly felt like I was having to try, so, yeah. <sighs> but anyway, that one is in the legs and it shouldn't take too long to, uh, to get back up to speed with things. And we'll be ready to hit it hard next Sunday. This Sunday. All right, guys, I need to head out right now. I need to leave the house because I need to head to Halfords, which is a shop here in the UK. It's kind of like a shop that sells, I don't know, everything. And amongst everything, it sells bike, bike bikes and bike parts and stuff. And they sell something in particular that I first kind of forgot about. But uh, the more I think about it, the more I think I should probably get one of these things. So I'm going to drive my car to Chorley, go to Halfords and buy what it is that I need to buy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the epicenter of the north. Halfords. Bikes. Upstairs. All right, in and out in under two minutes. Got exactly what I needed, which is a bike lock. Okay, so I've got like a thick, bulky bike lock at home, but I mean, that's not ideal when you're trying to pack light for uh, for a bike trip. So I got this thing here where it's basically a three lock combination thing, and you just press the button on the side, pull the lock out, it clips on, you put the code in, and uh, you've got a bike lock. It's dead small, it's dead compact. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's not the most secure. Like, I'm sure if I had a good pair of pliers, it'd probably chop through that. But it's not necessarily a bike lock to make it secure in, in that kind of literal sense. It's more of a case of like when me, and, when me and Brian go into a supermarket or into a shop to get some food and stuff, we can just quickly, you know, lock the bikes together. That way it acts as a bit of a deterrent if someone just comes along and tries to take it and ride off, for example. You know, it's not as if we're locking them up for long periods of time or locking them up outside overnight. It's just basically for like when we're coming in and out of a shop or something and we just don't want to leave the bikes on the road because i mean if we're in the middle of france we go into a, we go into a supermarket and someone takes the bike we're screwed we've literally got no other way home so yeah successful little mission but these things are not cheap 20 quid 20 quid guys i've just just got a call from a certain company i don't want to kind of spoil it just yet you're gonna have to wait and see a certain bike company that has come through and guys this afternoon we're heading somewhere and we're going to pick up a new bike. So let's keep things moving. Let's be positive. Let's look to the future. Keep keep your head up and uh, let's go and get a new bike. Can't quite believe I'm saying that, but let's go and get a new bike. Okay, guys, so I've made it to my destination, uh, but I'm a little bit early. They told me to arrive at three and it's like quarter two. So whilst I actually, first off, uh, I'm in my mum's car. <laughs> brum, brum. No, I'm literally in my mum's car. So I drove my car to my mum's work, uh, then I switched to her van just whilst I go and pick up the bike because I'm also, as well as picking the bike up, I'm going to pick up a couple uh, of cardboard boxes to take to France for me and for both me and Brian. And two cardboard bike boxes plus one bike don't fit in the Beamer. So um, yeah, in order to pick the bike up, I've uh, I I've borrowed my mum's car. So I've got 15 minutes to kill in the car. I thought, whilst I do guys, uh, I've got this box with me, which contains the panty rack and the bags. That I'm going to be taking to France. So, without further ado, let's open them up and take a look at them. Okay, guys, so I got into contact with uh, the guys at Tailfin, which basically make um, carbon fiber pannier racks for your bicycle. Oh, mate, look at this. Look at this, guys. This is absolutely sick. So, that folds out like this, um, then this clamps to your seat post, and then right here it slots into uh, your quick release, or in my case it's going to be a 12mm through axle because uh, my new bike is going to have disc brakes on it. So it's going to go through the through axle, and yeah guys, that is going to be my bag that I'm using for France. This thing obviously rolls out, you fill it with your clothes and stuff, it's completely waterproof, but the sick thing about Tailfin is they've made me... Now, these things aren't available to buy it. Now, this thing is absolutely sick. It's a custom uh, computer case that attaches to the Tailfin rack. So, I think it slots in like this. Okay, so there we go. It literally just slots in and then clamps onto these little uh, bolts up here. That is nice and secure onto the rack right now. So, this, I think, guys, is ready to be attached onto the new bike. Like, right off the bat, guys, this thing's carbon fiber, and it is, it is literally so light. It's so light. But anyway, Anyhow, I can't really show you the bag to its full potential. I'm just in the passenger seat of a car. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go inside, uh, get the new bike, and then we're going to take it home. And then I'll get absolutely everything uh, set up, ready to go, and then we'll take a proper look at it. All 
<laughs> okay, so I got the bike home a couple of hours ago. It's right now uh, about quarter, quarter to seven, six forty-five, and it is just starting to go dark. As you can, as you can see, it's starting to go dark. In it, Lex. So anyway, uh, I've got the bike inside. I'm going to give you a quick sort of rundown of my new bike, which if you saw in that little uh, the little driving clip right there, as I arrived at the shop, I got a bike from Ribble. So guys, literally, I sent him a message uh, yesterday or the day before saying, look, I'm doing this trip in a few days time. Is there any way you can help me out with the bike? And they literally just replied saying, uh, yeah, what, what size frame do you need? And I sent off my sizes and stuff. And they said, okay, come and, come and pick it up at 3 p.m. on Friday. I was like, okay, sick, so. Absolutely shout out to the legends at Ribble for, um, for you know for, for helping and supporting this trip by hooking me up with a bike. This guy is the Ribble CGR AL. It is, as you can see there, the disc brake bike and it has got 650B uh, rims on it. However, it has got quite a wide, or quite a high profile tire. So when I measure it up against a normal wheel, like, like, like so, you can see that it, there is virtually no difference in uh, in the height of the tire. In terms of the circumference of the overall wheel, it's basically the same as a standard uh, 700C wheel. However, you have got that wider tires. So it should feel a little bit nicer when we are, you know, seven, eight hundred k's into the ride. And um, <laughs> hopefully, the bigger tires are going to make things just just make life a little bit more comfortable. Then when we move up to the cockpit, we've got a full SRAM uh, hydraulic system. And as you can see, we've only got one gear lever on this side and, you know, nothing on that side. That's because we're running a one single chain ring setup. We've got a 40 tooth on the front and a big set on the back. Uh, it's, it's a mechanical system. Obviously, in the middle of the bike, I've got my Woho uh, frame bag. Then when we move to the back, this is where things get a little bit spicy. So Tailfin have hooked me up with their Aeropack S, it's called. I'll put all the details in the description box down below if you want to go and check out the website. But as well as sending out one of their carbon, one of their carbon mounts and, and a bag for the top, they've also made me this custom uh, laptop case. So I can take my laptop when I go to France next week and I can edit my videos and, you know, do all that good stuff. It literally just clips in like this and then slots in. You tighten the little latch at the back and it's nice and secure on there. It really is as simple as that. So the whole kind of idea behind this bike is aerodynamics. And as you can see, you know, we've not got any panniers hanging off the side. It's all pretty streamlined and, uh, and pretty aerodynamic. But I think this bike looks absolutely sweet, guys. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. You know, I just, I just love like how bright the orange stands out. You know, we're definitely going to be seen on the road on, on bikes like this. I also love the tan wall tires. So for those of you that don't know, I grew up racing BMX. You know, I come from a BMX racing background and like the whole... The whole thing in BMX was like tan wall tires and all like the cool kids had tan walls. So yeah, now that I've got some uh, some tan walls on my road bike, it kind of reminisces, makes me reminisce a little bit back to the, the BMX days. All right, so there we go. I've taken off the laptop case and you can have a bit of a better look at the tail fin rack. It just slots in through the skewer right there. There's a quick release version or a through axle version. I'm using the through axle obviously because I got some, uh, some disc brakes and then it straps to the seat post. Now it can go anywhere from, you know, a standard seat post up to a three inch thick area seat post so that's pretty cool uh, it's quite quite a universal mount it fits on all of your all of your bikes and then we've got this bag on the back which opens up quite big if I'm gonna be honest I'm, I've not got anything in it right now obviously that is a pretty humongous bag if I say so myself I mean okay it's not gonna be that full when when we pack it with clothes but you get the idea so if you if you want it to be it's a big bag and there we have it uh, again guys thank you to Ribble for hooking me up with the bike and uh, thank you to Tailfin for hooking me up with a sweet looking carbon rack check out the websites in the description box down below and uh, yeah I think all that's left to do now is to put a couple of lights on here and then take it out for a quick spin and uh, make sure everything is in order okay so whilst I've still got a little bit of light riding through the village I'm undecided yet, I'm unsure yet whether I'm gonna take my laptop with me and edit videos every night and post videos every day, or whether I just make one video at the end of the trip, kind of summarizing the whole thing. The advantage of that is I don't have the pressure of editing or having to quickly edit a video every night because I don't wanna do that. I wanna make sure that what I produce is good content and stuff that you guys wanna enjoy. I don't wanna to have to rush to get it done because you know we're late in one night or something. So yeah, a little bit undecided. But just know guys, if there is no videos next week, I'm not not filming, I'm creating one big video uh, for when I come home. But yeah man, so far this thing feels absolutely rock solid. I am a big, big fan of the fatter tires. They also feel like they roll nicely as well. Like I don't necessarily feel like I'm going any slower for the same amount of power, so yeah man. And now we're going into the darkness. <laughs> 
Sick sunset though. But considering it is going dark right now, I'm gonna end today's video here and I'll report back my thoughts and feelings on the bike and the equipment in tomorrow's video where I'll do a full rundown of everything that I'm gonna be taking on the trip to France. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you then guys. Peace.